In order to understand why we're not getting the services, even though we are sending the information and trying to receive the information, we need to look at the HTML that is generated by Rails. So if I go down here, we um, and uh, actually look at the HTML that interests us. Uh, we go down here to the input, and here are the inputs for the church, and here are the inputs for the nested service. And we can see here that the elements are associated with church, and the elements here are associated with services. And so it turns out that these services aren't actually nested inside of the church. We would expect if they were nested for it to say something like church subservices or, or connecting these services to the church. They, they really are independent from each other. And the reason for that is <coughs> uh, fairly simple. If we go back to our views and uh, go to the, the fields again, uh, what we see is we use this fields for method, but we didn't tie it to this form object like we did all these. Other. So we made a standalone set of fields. We didn't make these fields associated with the church. So if we do the simple change of doing f dot fields for, now we're creating fields for services that are associated with this church object here. So if we restart our web server, close our URL, and reload this page here, uh, what just happened? We don't have the service field anymore. That uh, seems weird. If we look at the HTML, it is completely missing. What's going on? Well, the answer here is uh, a little more subtle. We go back to the church's controller and we think about our new method where we created the empty church that is what Rails uses to be able to decide which fields uh, belong to the church and should be put on the page. Uh, we just created a church. We did not create a, an associated service. And so when we say create the fields for the associated service, it'll say what service? I don't know about any service. So it turns out what we need to do is create um, a service. And that we do that with the, the build. Remember, if we uh, do church.services, that lists all of our services for the church. And in an earlier video, we talked about doing .create, um, and here we're using .build. And the difference between .create and .build is the same as between .new and, um, and uh, .create in, in here, if we put a, a create here. New and build create an object in memory, but they don't store it to the database, which is what we want in this case because we're just trying to make a template object so that we can fill out its fields properly. We don't want to store a blank church and blank services associated with that church in the database. And so we use new and build rather than create for each of those. If we make this change right here and go back and reload the web page, we now see our fields filled out again because Rails is able to see that blank service object. And let's go ahead and, and look at the HTML that's generated. And this looks the same as before, church elements associated with name, and, and now well, you can see that these IDs are much longer. You can see that 
there's got to be some sort of association with church and services because uh, you can see that church services attributes and you can see the name field which is remember what the web browser uses to communicate with the web server it's got church and here's that services attributes that's a good hint that we're on the right route because we set up the service is attributes in our controllers uh, param, strong params and now we say it's sub zero because this is the zeroth service we could build more than than one service um, in fact let's do that uh, let's create two services that we could build for that service uh, for that for that church so I'm going to close this I'm going to reload this web page here and ah, look at that we've duplicated those fields one for for each service and you can see when we scroll down we have our attribute fields for the zeroth service our attributes for the the first service and the the difference between them is this zero index here for the the first service and the one index for for the second service and then we, we see those attributes right there so you can see quickly how we could support more than one service at a time I'm gonna just for ease of proceeding I am going to just do one service and we can uh, assume more later so now we have all these fields in place let's go ahead and add our information here so Sunday at 9 a.m. till 11 a.m. and main and first is our church location all right and we try to submit it uh, and it breaks and this is crazy what do you mean services church can't be blank we have a church right here we submitted a church right here and this is a really confusing error that um, is is really hard to to debug um, and to be honest is not one of my favorite things about rails the the fix is we have to go well, let's go to the models because it's a validation that's a problem in our service and it comes back to this church it was requiring uh, services requiring a church and our error message is saying it doesn't have a church right it can't be blank so it doesn't have a, a church what's going on is 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 quite confusing it turns out that this belongs to method uh, when it says belongs to church when we use the build method um, on a, a service it doesn't populate the ID of the church yet because we haven't created the church the ID for the church is unknown and so we don't have a link back to the church uh, because we we don't have a church ID until we create the church and we can't create the church if the service doesn't have a church and so we get into this um, circular reasoning behavior but there is a, a way to fix this and that is that we can say that our, when we connect to the church um, it should be pointing back to us through this services field in the church um, and why rails can't infer that automatically I don't know and we need to do the the same thing in our churches model where our our services point back to us in their church field and when we do that and we try to resubmit this we now have a church so let's go down to our console and see what uh, was produced with that last submission there so if we go see oops, whoops church last we now have a church and we can go c.services 
and yay, we've got what we want. We have it on Sunday at 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. at Main and First. So we do have our church service that was connected with this example church. And obviously this page is incomplete because it should list all the services associated with the church. And that's some of the functionality that you're going to need to produce in your uh, final project. Um, the last thing I want to talk about with nested services is that what we've done so far by putting explicitly the services with the church is very awkward. We have to predict how many services there are going to be. It is not dynamic at all. And it, uh, it doesn't allow for the, the user to be able to have as many or as little services as, as they want. And this is the whole point of having a relational database where we don't have to predict how many services are within our church. If we did, we could just include a field for all of our services to begin with. So what we really would like is a website that dynamically allows us to add or delete services to the church while we're creating the, the church. And there is a way to do that. Um, I'm running out of time to go through videos, but let me point you to a resource that shows you how to do that. So I'm going to um, go to railscast.com, which I pointed uh, quite earlier in the episodes and I'm going to go to the accepts nested attributes for entries and they've got uh, this right here where they talk about basically uh, what we've talked about in, in, in these videos and you can look through them all and, and see they use a different ha a many to one setup but it is the, the the same basic thing what you want to look at, at for dynamically adding and removing these services is the part two to this episode right here where they include um, some JavaScript to be able to remotely connect to the the server um, and be, be able to, to handle that properly uh, there's there's some stuff in here that um, I don't want to go into in these videos because of uh, adding extra JavaScript and stuff. So I, I want you to to know that this is possible and doable, and uh, people do it you know, all the time. And it is something that we would require from a fully functional website. We're just not going to quite get there by the end of this semester.